I love Cindy Kim bitch because she gets irritated. Whatever irritates Kim, I like Too to funny, do. Mama. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> not I'm not like I had to work your son. Too funny, mamas. Why would you have to do it until someone on your knees? Right, because I was just thanking God. I was, I was like, you are so good and worthy to be praised. And that Louis Vuitton was too heavy. I couldn't carry no more. I went to my knees. She bought the regular, like the brown luggage that everybody got with the little squares. I bought that yellow luggage. That yellow, that's the, that dude. that glass case. And I went in that glass case and took, I took something that was ostrich that was still alive. It was going, what, what, what? It had ostrich on it. It was still alive. And when you buy Louis Vuitton, feed it for you every month. When I tell you we clear out the store, and then, we, and then Kim said she had to go to the bathroom. She went to the bathroom and she was gone for a minute. And then I got a text on my phone and she said, bitch, they got shoes! <laughs> but I had already called Tom. Right, Tom and came back from the kid was mad. She was mad. And Tom came and I was so scared. I was scared like an abused woman. I was like, oh shoot, oh shoot. Cause they see you and they don't tell you the price. They just slide it in front of you. And they slid the and price. She tried to kick her stuff over to my side. I was like, that ain't my shit. That ain't my shit. She was like, I was like, no, we ain't together. <laughs> And can I tell you, we ain't never been with no rich, rich man before. We just ain't never been. We've been with men named Rich, but we ain't never been with them. We've been with men who think they rich, but they... We ain't never been with no bona fide rich man. Like, Jay been friends with Tom for He never told us how rich. No, we didn't know. So he, they slid the bill to Tom Joyner. And he took out that black card and he just handed it to him. He said, did y'all have fun? I had, a, I had a Charlie horse and an orgasm right there. I was good because I've been with rich men before. Did they do that for you? Mm-hmm. I usually mess up and sleep with them first, so I don't get shit out of <laughs> That's why I should say we ain't been with no rich man had to sleep. Did that you did, that that didn't ask for nothing? But then we went to dinner. We went to Mr. Chow's and what are, in what Beverly are Hills. Dinner, so Louis Vuitton, when you buy a certain amount of stuff, they deliver it to you personally. You don't have to take it out the store. So we was at Mr. Chow's, the only black people. So at this point, Tom wanted us to feed him. How could we say no? So we was feeding them. We was feeding them. We was laughing at all these jokes. Because he would do whatever Tom say. Went. So we feeding them food. Louis Vuitton employees, three of, them. three of them walked in. It was a pretty woman moment. You know that movie, Pretty yeah. Woman? It, everybody yeah. should have a moment. It was in slow motion when those white people were like, oh my god. <laughs> Who are those niggas? <laughs> the hell? And they, then they're trying to figure out who Tom was. They're oh, trying yeah. to figure out who we were. I know they thought we was hookers, because she had her titties all out. My dress was all short. Oh, wait, wait, wait a minute. So you're trying to say that my, your titties were now? No, I, I, I my dress line. was short. But I can see the line. No, that was, that was, it was long. You saw long. You didn't see no line. You saw long. <laughs> Like the, they, so it was, so they had all of the Louis Vuitton bags, they had it on chairs, luggage, on bags. chairs, on town, on, and it was crowded on Valentine's Day. And, 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 and I, I tried get, to call TMZ, but the line was busy. <laughs> I mean, you had to put this on TMZ. You had to. Nothing. And we walked out, and they had to help us carry all that into Tom's car, and we got back to the peninsula. And what we think, we, we was just like, this and is and it, 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 we was in the car, I was like, uh oh, uh oh. I was like, uh oh. It's about to, uh oh, I, I like, think. Uh, I'm not fucking them, you fucking them. <laughs> Oh shoot, do you think the way 
like you fed in them noodles saying something. Y'all, I said, y'all, the way he signed that card said something. Oh, we were so scared. We was, and then I ain't know where we were. <laughs> we didn't we know nothing. And then we got to the hotel, and I'm like, we, 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 we got to do it, Kim. <laughs> That's what she said. She's like, we got to do it. And I was like, well, okay, I'll take it for the team. That's why she messed up. Can you just give me my ass, man? <laughs> no, this one she messed up. This one it all went south. Oh, it's like, yeah, Psalms 27. <laughs> even know if Jeffrey's in school anymore. I stopped answering emails from his teachers. What? I, because I, it's too overwhelming. Kim, they send me these emails every other day about these missing assignments. This boy is sitting in front of, how he got so many missing assignments, I have no idea. Then they send me stuff and they're like, you gotta download this, you gotta read this, you gotta do this. It's, and it's so, it's so much, I get comatose. I don't know if that boy is even living here anymore. He might be working at Starbucks for all I know. I don't know nothing about what's going on with this child. I'm not, I got a lot of unanswered emails from these teachers. I can't take it no more. I'm not, I didn't sign up to be a homeschool teacher. That's not what I do, but everything is on me. It's Mrs. Shepard. We need to talk to Mrs. Shepherd. I don't know nothing about no algebra. I don't even know what the kind of math the boy is studying. History. He behind on the Spanish. He got to read this. He got to study this. He got to do this. Then he getting his IEP. Then it going is out. It's too. I'm trying. You like I'm trying. Mm -hmm. Then he, you know, I'm trying to cook all the time for him because when we first got in this pandemic, I didn't mind ordering out Postmates and getting him McDonald's all the time because I didn't think it was gonna be this long. But he yeah. been eating fast food all the time. You know, now his his uh, countenance is affected because he eats so much fast food. Now he, so he microwave stuff. Everybody say get the microwavable stuff, but it's still got all of the um, the, what do you call it? All of the, the process stuff. He's microwaving, so his mood is affected. So it's like I'm trying to cook. I'm not a cook. I'm I'm trying to cook all of this stuff. My refrigerator leaking. I'm over here, and my vagina's lonely, and okay, I'm just wait, trying wait. to do a bunch of stuff. And it's just I'm overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. I'm not okay, taking no. away nothing. There are people who listen to us, and please forgive me, because I know there are people who listen to us. You have three children. You have four children. Yeah. Four children. So I am. I do take my hat off to you, and I say, if I'm overwhelmed and stressed, and and I'm mean, Sherry Shepherd, then I know you overwhelmed and stressed. So it, even above and beyond, and I'm just saying we all feeling it. And Thanksgiving is coming up, and I'm by myself. This boy don't even come out the room to talk to me. I say, oh, Jeffrey, man. you want to watch a movie? He act like two roaches then crawled out the side of my damn mouth. <laughs> he, so I'm sitting over here by myself. Like, by myself, I might as well be a ghost. You know what happened? My nice carpet from Z Gallery that I saved so much money to buy, Lexi ate a burrito, Jeffrey's burrito, and freaking had explosive diarrhea on my beautiful carpet. So you know what I got to do? I go all the way to Stanley Steamer. They not written no steamers no more. The ones no doctor, the doctor, rug doctor at yeah. the grocery store because COVID, they don't rent them no more. So I got to go clean this carpet myself. You know what? I got shit all over my hands. I had to go wash it all off because I'm trying to get this explosive diarrhea off my new gray carpet. So then I went and bought like a little steamer from Target. I had to stand in line so long because everybody's just so mad. People don't want to wear no mask. I'm over here and I'm like, I just need to get this steamer so I can get the shit off my carpet so I can see if I can save it. The dog running around shitting everywhere because he ate, she didn't ate a burrito. No good and damn well, you're not supposed to be eating burritos, but that's what your ass get. Now, and I didn't step in it, so now it's on my gym shoe. Mm. Oh, I ain't got no sticks to clean this stuff off my shoe. Jeffrey come out the room. The one time he come out the room to talk to me, you know what he say? Why stink in here? You know why? Oh. 
Because I'm trying to clean Boo Boo off the rug, which you gonna help me do. Now I got to him. Oh, uh, I didn't even want the dog. I wanted the parrot. Ugh, I hate you, dog. I'm just like, you know what? Go back in the room. I can't stand your mouth. Your mouth is getting on my daggone nerves. And by the way, you got a history assignment, a geography assignment, and I gotta have a dog on parent teacher conference. Are you even going to gym class, little boy? Huh? Are you taking gym class? I'm just a little, and my vagina is really lonely. So I'm over here. I'm just trying Always to go back to the vagina. I'm trying to work on Dish Nation. I'm over here. You know, every time I got to go, hi, welcome to Dish Nation. <laughs> this boy want to walk out the room talking about you too loud. The teachers say you too loud. But you know what? Tell your teachers that's how I pay the bill so you can be online schooling. Tell your teachers that when I'm over there going, do, 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 I'm, I'm, t- you know. Hey there, I'm Dawn Lewis. And I'm David A. Arnold. Yes, I am Dawn Lewis. And I just popped by my sister girlfriend's Kim Whitley's house. And who did I find? Miss Sherry Shepard. And yep. they are doing their show. That's right. Two funny, funny mamas. mamas. And we came in here to just, I came to get some oatmeal. What's your name? I already introduced myself. No, you didn't. I did. He said oh, David I'm I'm not, Why are you not? You, this is why. Pull your mask over your nose. Sherry is going to probably replace Kim with Dawn. <laughs> So look for that change. You can read my mind. <laughs> Two Funny Mamas, one of the hottest podcasts going right now. You guys need to check it out, download it, and tell your friends about it. And check it out. Two More people will pop by. Who knows? Who I knows? know. Never know who's going to pop by and what's going to happen. Two Funny Mamas. This is great. That's the two. One, two. two one, two. Funny Mamas. You look, you look motherly, and I and I look motherly. I've decided to wear some colors. One thing I wanted to say that that just hit me. I like the idea of two funny mamas with Sherry Shepard and Kim Whitley. You had a different name that you wanted to name us. Do you remember? Oh, TRF. I was gonna say t- two, two reform. I, oh yeah, yeah. Two reform freaks, or was it two reform hoes? Which one was it? Was it? Two reformed hoes. Yeah, you wanted to I thought that'd be a family. better name. I mean, you could write in, make a comment. If y'all think instead of two funny mamas, it should be called two reformed hoes. This is yes, this is what we want you to do. When you subscribe, please subscribe to our YouTube channel and listen to us on the platforms. And please, when you listen to us, leave a review of our podcast because we, you know, we need reviews to keep going. So re and, and let us know. If you think the title Two Funny Mamas is good or if Two Reformed Hoes is more appropriate. <laughs> I don't think it's appropriate because one of us is not reformed all the way. Uh, Just saying. Yeah. So I don't know if you can call it something that you're not. Not saying you're. I'm saying the subjective you that are not allowed. I don't, I'm going to say one. One is not. A, I don't know if one is allowed to call a podcast, a title that one cannot fulfill. I am a mama. Now the other parts about me. But the reformed hoe, the reformed hoe may need a little work. So see, we we are two funny mamas, but we might be one and a half reformed hoes. What? I'm just putting that out there. Cause you're still doing it. Are you? Are you still doing it? Are you? Okay. Kids might be listening. I don't know. No, this podcast is not for children. I, it's that, definitely not for kids. This is not a podcast for children. That's on the Nickelodeon channel and the Disney channel. However, that's for another podcast. It'll be called, Are You Still Doing It? How's that sound? <laughs> that could be one of our topics. That podcast will last two seconds. No. Yes. How you know? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But I like the title I, of the podcast. I, Are you still doing I like, it? So I have my head down. Okay. Uh-oh. So I guess just admitting something to you is you just be transparent. You just be honest, right? And we've been friends for a very long time. But there's something I have to admit to you. So you, you know there's a, huh? huh? You, you take something out of my purse. I saw you I in my steal. purse. Okay. I don't steal. No, no, I don't steal. Now, my cousin, Marlena, um, that's too um, Marlena, some stuff be missing. Be you ever missing. hide your money up under like the floorboard behind the toilet when you no, got no. certain? Yeah, family coming over. 
certain family. I and my cousin Marlena. Jack Daniels. I got a bottle of Jack Daniels. My cousin used to kill it. And he came over. Girl, I couldn't think real quick. I grabbed the Jack Daniels and threw it in the oven. I'm because you, you have to do that. Like my cousin Marlena, no matter where she, no matter how I hide stuff, she always leaves with some of my stuff and then comes back and act like it's hers. Like I saw my comb in her purse and I was like, Marlena, that's my comb. That ain't your comb. That's my comb. I just got the comb last week, Marlena, and you was over last week and I can't find it. Well, I don't know who took it because mine was missing too. Maybe you took mine. Uh, this girl walked in. She would be wearing um, my hair. She would wear my clothes. Um, so okay. it's not so that. That's one, of, that's one of your new jokes. For st I'm writing it down for stage that you're going to tell. Okay, thank uh, you, Kim. I appreciate it. This yeah. is the kind of friends that we are and I feel so bad that I'm having to even say this to you as a friend, because this is a line that friends typically don't cross. I, I kind of need you to look at me because this is hard. Okay, but, to oh say my this God. Hard. Yeah. What was happening? Um, you you gonna say it on the podcast? Yeah, because if I don't get it out now, I, I'm I this has just been on my mind like a lot. So okay. um you there's somebody that you kind of liked. There was a guy that you kind of liked and uh -huh. um, y'all came over to my house and he's, you know, this guy that you kind of like, he's a cop. So you brought him over because, and this is something oh, else yeah. we're going to talk about at a different podcast. Oh, we yeah. both went to the, we both went to the gun shop and I purchased a gun because I want to be able to protect my home. Right. So you, you brought, uh, it's a friend and you brought him over and, and you obviously you, you like him. You, you you like him you're not it's not that y'all dating or anything but you like him and he's yeah. a cop and he came over and he this is a first, this is the second time i met him uh and so he came over uh -huh. kim he was so gorgeous what? like i literally was standing there as he was showing me how to use a gun and what to do oh, and i got turned on by the guy that you like i'm i'm so sorry i am so Wait a, this is not, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because I, I know who you're talking about. And I didn't, I remember coming over, you didn't seem different. Because I it was like all of these feelings inside. And I'm telling you this. And here's the thing. I want to, I want to put a disclaimer out. I'm not one of those girlfriends who, when you bring a guy around, I'm winking at him. I'm trying to do stuff behind your back. That was in 12th grade. That was in 11th grade. Right. I'm not Try doing that. I will, never, yeah. I will never be trying to take what is yours, even though he's not really yours because you just like him like that. Anyway, so but I will never ever. But I, I had him first. It don't matter that he's not mine. I had him I will first. Never, I will, okay. So I mean, I mean, I mean not, like, not like property, but if he's my friend, he was with me first. Like I brought him to you. You can't. It's like a a a a, a rite of passage. Like you got to ask or like. Like Monique uh, did about girls. Oh, like what? Uh, I was I talked over you. Like what? No, like Monique did about Gerald Levert. She she kept, stepped to me like a woman and was like, "Hey, you know, I like him." And I'm because I'm going Gerald to Levert, it. you and Gerald Levert had dated, and well, yeah, we grew yeah. up together, been friends, and we yes, and he, we, Gerald Levert was in love with you. No, 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 no. Gerald Levert was in love with you. He made the song Casanova about okay. you. So That's let's, let's really be honest. And so Monique That's liked me. Gerald Levert and she kept, she stepped up to you and she said, I like Gerald. And then yes. from there, okay. It, it is, all right. So, so then I'm up and then so I'm, this is the, I, no, I'm just saying that. So it's like, you are saying, so what did you feel? Like, this is so crazy to me, but it's interesting that you have the, 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 the bravery is the, if, if that's correct, that I don't know if I can tell my girlfriend, like, that dude you was with or the dude that possibly can turn into your man, like he was so fine or I can, can I, I that's uh, interesting. What made you want to tell me this? Silent night, holy night, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin's mother and child. Holy infant, so tender and mild, sleep in heavenly peace, sleep in heavenly peace. 
heavenly peace. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Why are we talking so soft? <laughs> because I thought you were going to read the comments. Because that was such a great ending. It was a good ending. It was such a great Chris, ending. can you move it? Let me read this thing. You, that was okay. really good. It was. Okay, we'll do another ending. Okay, go on and read Okay, let me read. Because that was like amazing. I, shoot. That almost had me crying. I almost passed out, though. What's Andre, up, Andre? finally. Hey, what's oh, happening? Finally back. Man, it's been forever. Yes. I got tested, but, you know, I, I just... I don't know how you feel, but I'm I'm good. So. Did you get a negative result? Yeah, I'm good. You sent me. But he's been name. around four thousand people since. No, I'm no, been he, around you. He been around you, <laughs> and this is a person who actually, after he went and saw his mom and his dad, he actually came back to LA in quarantine for fourteen days. I'm I don't know anybody who does that. I was like, where are you? He's like, I'm quarantining. I gotta be safe, man. I gotta be safe. When was he? When were you with Kim? Uh, hey, 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 stay out of business. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to ask you a question. So we asked Kristen, me. we asked Chris and Matt, Chris and Matt, say hi to Andre. He's back. Yeah, it's great What's to see you, Andre. Andre. Glad you're, glad you're doing you well. Been a minute. Yes. It's been a minute. I know. I thought Andre was going to stay out there in the wild back, <laughs> in the outback of Chicago. I, need, I, need I was in the cornfields and quad cities. So Andre. Yes. A guy says to you, uh, I, I'm not looking to be in a relationship. I really like you. If it gets, I would love it to get physical, um, but I'm not looking to be in a relationship. I would love to have a conversation and have fun and and get physical. Because we're in quarantine. I mean, COVID, everybody want to get physical. I've been looking at y'all differently. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know how many Too Funny Mamas viewers and listeners would be pleased by that? They've been just asking for that to happen since the beginning. I'm, do you, do you get a picture of his face? Sexual. Do you get the picture of his face? <laughs> Kim's it's, it's had enough. Rough, man. Been, I've been around 70 year olds for a month and a half. <laughs> <laughs> Andre, when you go to the grocery store, are you giving ladies hungry eyes over your mask? Man, I, I'm, I'm trying to be respectful and keep it on that. That's all you can see is this. This is all you see. <laughs> yeah, but if your eyes are bugging so out if, like if mine I do when I go to the store. the slightest bulge of anything, booty or boobs, I'm... It don't matter if they hanging like a beanbag. You don't care. It's, <laughs> it's been rough, man. It's been rough. <laughs> you can't talk to a person and you can't meet them in the street because you no. don't know what's up under here. They be looking good with the eye makeup and stuff. Then they take it off and like, Ugh, you know. <laughs> so you, you don't know what you're gonna get. Oh gosh. <laughs> Have you done the? Have you done it's the Halloween thing? Halloween all year round now, Jack. You don't know what's under that mask. <laughs> Andre, you got to tell him when you're in line at the grocery store and you kind of meet mm -hmm. eyes with a lady, you got to go. Just so you know, I'm smiling real big under this mask. You get, you let them know, and they'll giggle. If they go a little lower, they know what's on my mind. <laughs> We have teenagers who are listening to oh, us. Oh, I'm sorry. I was talking about my belly because I, I, I've been eating a lot during COVID. I got COVID pounds. I like, how are you the trainer and your belly bigger than everybody else's? I can't even use the excuse I'm pregnant because it don't work that way. Mm. <laughs> oh my God. This COVID got me jacked up, man. <laughs> You are I believe in you. Like you've never ranted before. <laughs> I've been go. I miss y'all, man. I've been missing you. All. <laughs> you are whining. <laughs> new, new, uh, new viewers. Andre was a, he's a staple in the show. He, he hasn't been around for fifteen episodes, ten episodes yeah. at least. I went to uh, check on my mom, make sure she was good, and my dad. My mom's a rock star. I'm not worried about my mom. She's good. She walking around. My mom's birthday was on the 13th. She's 73 or 74. And we've had your mom on the podcast. Looks to and be 55. Man, I hated walking through the store. We went to Costco and my mom be wearing tight booty jeans. I'm like, hey, you, you my mama. I, dudes, because I got to, my mom look younger than me. They think we a couple. I'm like, no, that's my mama, man. Stop looking at her booty like that. You know, Jeffrey feels <laughs> Same way. He doesn't like me to wear booty shorts. Does, does Jeff, does uh, John Maybe if you cut that grandpa beard, maybe you cut off the grandpa smirk. beard. <laughs> <laughs> they will believe you. You don't have to be anybody because you are Kim Whitley and you bring a skill set that nobody else has. So as soon as you come out, that joy and that smile is going to light up the camera. 
as long as you're looking at the right camera, it is going to. <laughs> <laughs> That's the truest thing I've ever heard. Please ask That's them true. before you go out, what That's camera am terrible. I looking at? When I say yeah, how you, because this will be Kim, literally, Kim gonna come out. Yep. Then anyway, when you feel it, Kim gonna be like, how you doing? <laughs> you see one of her nails, how you doing? I'm, produ you I'm, the produ I'm the producer in the ear. Oh, uh, Kim, Kim, camera three. You're on, you're on top. Camera, camera three. How you doing? Kim, Kim, we just see how she's What? Uh, uh, what how, how you doing? And then, and and then, then the this will be Kim the on the chair. This is what we've got to, and I'm gonna have to tell Finesse, please oh. watch out for this. Cause Finesse gonna be talking and Kim will be like this. <laughs> Kim, Kim, you be Finesse. Be Sherry will be you. <laughs> okay, all right, I'm gonna be Sherry, Finesse. I'm Sherry, Finesse. you're Kim, you're Kim. And we're back live with co-hosts Finesse Mitchell and Kim Whitley, take it away. All right, how y'all doing? It is good to have y'all back. Uh, we were just talking about the things that were going in the news. Uh, of course, oh, Kanye, West has bought a, uh, Kanye West has bought a house uh, across from uh, Kim Kardashian. What, what do you I think? I found the house. I found the house. <laughs> I got it. I got Kim Kardashian's house. I got, it. I got the Zillow. Can y'all close up on my iPhone? I found the house. I found the house. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What is wrong with you? I'm going to, I am going to be focused. Well, oh, I am doing that. I already know that. I already know. Because I do it all the time. So I'm not going to rock. I'm going to sit. I'm going to be a lady. And I'm going to talk about what is happening. And of course, as soon as we talk about someone, stop it, Sherry. I can hear them in my ear now. Kim, stop the rocket. Okay. Depending on your uh, uh, finances and your access to things differs with different people. Like Chrissy Teigen, I loved it. Chrissy Teigen said she was gonna donate $100,000 to people who were getting arrested. And somebody tweeted something very racist to her. And she said, oops, I'm gonna make it 200,000. And I thought, that is amazing, Chrissy Teigen. Let me write a check for 200,000. It's some people that they gonna let out of jail and then they gonna go, her check bounced. So you gotta go back. <laughs> That's what I'm oh, talking about. Yeah. My check would bounce if I y'all can write a check for two hundred thousand right now. I got my checkbook right now. Is I'll it say going it, to get you out? No. No, sir. No, sir. No, um, but, but, but with the pressure, Chrissy Teigen, Ellen, um, Tyler Perry, they're not we're in a pandemic, people. I keep saying, even if me and Sherry went down and handed out sandwiches and water. Don't nobody want it because it might got COVID on it. What is wrong with you? I didn't you? think about that. That it That's might what have we're the. Forgetting. We're in a pandemic. COVID is running rapid. Don Lemon, you go out there. You, I don't see you out there handing out and touching people and breathing and throwing bricks and speaking. You got to do you what you what can just... do from the safety of your house. You know what I just realized, Kim? Why they don't let the old heads know about the march? why you didn't know about the march and where you should go. Cause first of all, I'm looking at your face. You look mad. That's how auntie look. Right, you just right. look mad. You look like you need your package of cigarettes and your Newports. And they didn't let you know about the march. Cause during the march, everybody would be screaming, no justice, no peace. Black lives matter. You'd be like the COVID, the COVID. It's a pandemic. Put your mask on. Put your mask on. Put your mask on. <laughs> That's what I You'd be saying. like, baby, put your mask on. Baby, put your mask on. You'd be divisive to the cause. So I said, now I'm seeing exactly why they didn't let you know about the yes. protest. They figured you you just go and stay home. But I would just say to Don Lemon, I think it was very irresponsible what you said. I think that you took private conversations that were texted to you of people who were concerned but didn't know what to do, but wanted to do something and you called them out on it. And I think you don't know what people are doing because they ain't gonna call you up and say, hey, Don, I just took my private jet and flew to Minneapolis to speak. And you, who are you? You're not the arbiter of things. You're not the judge of, okay, that's, that's good. That's good. So I thought it was very irresponsible. And Don, like you said, when you called everybody out, you said, I love you, but I gotta do it. I love you, Don, and I gotta do it. And I'm really, I'm, I'm uh, really upset that you did that because it I makes people feel like it makes people feel like they're not doing enough and it incites other people 
to jump on folks and go, you're not yes. doing enough. Because what would you have certain people do? They, they do at the level that they can. So yes, those people that got big money, kudos to Chrissy Teigen for doing 200,000. For somebody else, they make sandwiches and they pass them out and they pass out water and they explain to other children what this means. They post stuff to let you know mm -hmm. where, where you're supposed to be going. Let's remember this, that, you know, everybody's doing something or they're putting a person to work at their friggin' 800,000 square foot studio to make sure people are getting money in their pocket to take care of their family. And they're giving them more help And they're placing bricks, piles Jesus of bricks. said, Don, before you get on somebody, take the plank out of your eye. And I would say, Don, yes, you're reporting the news 24 seven, but personally, what are you doing? Don Lemon, right. what are you doing? And I said it, and that's our Besides word. Besides doing today. his job. Besides doing your job. Now that's your mm -hmm. job that you get paid for, Don Lemon. What are you personally doing? Okay, Kim, that's not a man <laughs> thing. That's you when you fell and your lip is busted up. What I was saying was <laughs> nobody. Oh my gosh, you look horrible. Is that yellow band -aid? Oh my gosh, gosh. you look <laughs> horrible. This is what I Try it now. Maybe they'll do what you do and go fund me down. I came over from the hospital <laughs> and nobody <laughs> sent me nothing. <laughs> but no surgeons trying to fly me nowhere. Ain't nobody helped me. I did get a lot of followers. A lot of so followers. So people don't know why your face looks like Kim's face. If you're listening to us, she she fell, did, in, a she fell in a hole. She was at the what do you call it? Plant shop, uh, nursery. nursery. She was at the nursery looking for some plants, and there was a hole in the in the ground at the nursery, and they didn't put those little cones around it. So Kim, you know she's distracted and got ADD. She wasn't looking down, and she stepped in the hole and tripped and fell and hit her head. On the on the cement pavement, and she busted her nose. See my head right there, bam! She busted, right there. banged her head, busted her nose, her busted that open, busted her lip open, and her. Uh -huh. So this picture is her looking horrific, like she got beat up in the worst way. She didn't talk to me for mm. a week because I said she looked like a baboon booty. <laughs> oh, damn. Is that what you she said to her? Say that. You said she looked like a baboon. And I lost booty. work and everything. It yeah, like you couldn't work. Hand. I still got. And the she job. put the picture out on Instagram, and I was like, please take that down to put you out of her life you got to try to marry her you're gonna be gone oh you're gonna be gone sherry put you out of her life <laughs> how many times you've been engaged five <laughs> four <laughs> i'm chris that's what i'm saying it's tongue in cheek <laughs> like what do you have to do to get the boot say kim we walking down the altar next tuesday and i and uh i, I need this house to be cleared out of people that, yeah you're gonna get the boot Profess your undying thing. love and, and pledge your soul to her. Yeah, you'll be gone in a month. <laughs> you'll be gone in a month. All you got to do is tell Kim, you know what? I love you. I'm committed to you. You and Joshua. Only you oh. and Joshua. I want us to go get married. And I don't want all these people in the house when I get back, when I get home from work every day, Kim. I want it to be us. I want us to be a family. I want us to do things together. Just us. Yeah, you're going to get the boot. You're going to be gone. It's going to be oh like uh, waiting to exhale. You're going to come and all your stuff going to be on fire because of friends and set your shit on fire. Excuse me, listeners. No, my and friends, no, my friends be tripping. They, I had to sit them down. I said, y'all are going to prevent me from being uh, by my true uh, happiness. I said, y'all got to stop. I said, when a man comes in my life, y'all got to be nice to him. And, and then, you know, Rodney walked back and forth. He'll say, mm, he'll be gone in a month or he'll make exactly. it. Exactly. I'm like, what is wrong with y'all? They are not believers. Because you, first of all, the fact that you got to sit your posse down, this whole tribe of people. Come on in from the backyard, y'all. I need to talk to you about my relationship. Y'all come on over from the family room watching the game. Come on, come on from downstairs. Come on from downstairs. I need to talk to you. Bring Joshua and his three friends in. I need all 25 of y'all to sit down because I need to talk to you about my relationship. Now, I'm just telling y'all, when you come over Monday through Sunday, I just need you to be quiet and give my man some respect. But when he talks to you, I need you to be nice. Come on, come on. Who's up there? I don't oh. know who that is, but come on down. That's little Stevie. Get him about down my here. Relationship. Get down no. here. And I just need to tell y'all, I got a man in my life, and he says he loves me. Now, we all going to have to figure out how to get along. He needs somewhere to sleep. So whoever got their clothes up in my closet, I can't do it no more because he needs somewhere to put the clothes. Y'all have to be nice to my boyfriend. Oh, he's saying some of y'all. I don't know. Is it you in the yellow shirt? Because he says somebody in the yellow shirt was snippy with him. Is it you? Oh who, is, who is that? Well, welcome to the family. Welcome that to the Whitley quarters. But you in the purple. I know you've been giving him a hard time, too. And I'm just saying I love him. <laughs> and if we're going to make this work, 
Oh if my we, God. J- just sit up, I know there's no more chairs. Just sit there on the stairs. <laughs> I'll talk loud. You got to do this. Mailman. Make this work. Mailman's here. Oh my, the mailman. Tell him to come on in. Tell the mailman to come on in. I made him some muffins. So come on in because he said the mailman was a little snippy. But everybody. Oh, God. Everybody. If we're going to make this relationship work with the man that loves me and wants to put the ring on our on my finger, uh, our we're going to we're gonna have to work this out. So I don't know if, if uh, y'all need to talk to him, if we need to sign a manifesto. Don't worry. You're not going anywhere. I'm not saying stop crying in the yellow shirt. Stop crying. You're not going anywhere. <laughs> I just need you to move your stuff out of my closet so he has some room. So we're going to make, we need to make my fiance feel welcome in this house. We got it? One, two, three. One, two, three. Everybody come on in. One, two, three. That is horrible. My front door yeah. is ringing. That's horrible. Sherry, follow up question. What's the uh, what's the limit? Is are there a number of sexual encounters or dates that uh, that make these meetings mandatory? Like what? How many of these does Kim have to call? No, it's only Kim will only have that kind of meeting when the when the boyfriend gets so frustrated that he blows, <laughs> and then Kim's like, "What's the problem? What 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 happened?" Well, there you go. You there see? it is. And here she comes. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, there is no Sherry Shepard this week because she had to move. So, uh, for two funny mamas, it's like one funny mama, but I found my best friend who's going to sit in for her. Boom! (laughs) Caroline Ray, everybody, going to join us for two funny mamas this week. Did you have a mask on? Is it safe? It's it's okay. Just I hold I hold my breath while you talk, and then you hold your breath okay. when I talk. Okay. okay, but I feel like we're so close to each other in real life. Are you talking? Okay, I can talk. Hold your breath. Hold your breath. Caroline Ray, everybody, this week on Two Funny Mamas, your turn. <laughs> oh, don't breathe. Ah! Oh. Hey, I'll take the back seat. Hi, Sherry. So how have you been handling? Girl, you uh, better stop, because you know I ain't coming in saying no mess. I don't take no shower. I see roaches, and I ain't eating, and I lost 82 pounds because I'm an ambassador for WW. OK, OK, Sherry. It's a, you, you need to uh, not Joshua, talk get over there and sit down. Can you fix the seat right now? Yeah. Tell us, no, I want the French doors so over there. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm sorry. I got to text my girlfriend because we having a conversation right now. I don't mean to. Hey, I really girl. Appreciate I don't do this much. I don't I, act like you this. You me up tonight? Yeah, because I want to tell you, if I want to put my own breast on display, I'm going to put my own like breast on display. I ain't playing with you. Listen, all, listen, America, listen America. I'm light-skinned because I'm in the sun all the time. That's what, really? That's what you, I don't sound like that. Why, when you imitate me, your voice got to go down real deep? Well, go, 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 go talk show. You only talk show. You go and say what say what you feel. I Just go and like say. I don't talk like that, and I don't stand like that, and I don't. I don't know why you are using such abusive terms, Sherry Shepard. What I'm sorry. Go um, ahead. I'm sorry. I'm See, sorry. that's why you look like we got stuff to do. We can we end this podcast? I got I got stuff to do. That's gonna make I me money. Have, I do have stuff to do. But I am very and I, interested. And in I'm just saying, world. how come we can't talk about what I want to talk about? Because all right, go no, on, do no, your no. Love. I want to talk about you. I would like to talk about how I you. I'm 89 years old when I ain't got no wig on now. I, said I don't it up interrupt there. you like that. I don't interrupt yes, you like that. That was pretty funny. Yes, I don't interrupt you like that. And I'm never in the in yeah, all, where's, in where's the where's the I sell on Amazon? Me in the where's, camera? where's the stuff I sell on Amazon? Hold on, let me get it. Hold on, hold on. This, if you all are listening to this foolishness, Sherry Shepard is standing up, running around, acting a fool. She wants us to see her little body and her little outfit. That's why. What, the what about your ex? What's going on? The one that I liked. Oh. <laughs> what happened to him? Oh, he was so good looking. He was Damn. good looking. Do you know, you remember somebody so good looking, you want to go, and that's a real bad word. God, he was so good looking. He was. This dude that he was in love with Kim but he was such a heterosexual male and he was a cop so he was like how how tall was he six 
six, six, three, six, four, mm -hmm. thick thighs. And he would swing that gun and, and show you how to load it. I was so turned on by that man. Yes. Yes, I was too at one point. Can I call him? You sure can. You, you see, know, I, this is why I love Kim. Because I would go, no, you can't. No, I'm into recycling everything. <laughs> I don't believe you. You had a whole episode. You had a whole episode where Sherry was, was shaking. Episode. She was shaking, quivering. Because I'm, Chris, you would be shaking too if you saw him. I'm not going to say his name. Yeah. He is so like, he, it's <laughs> testosterone flowing yes. from and this man's body. And he had the most body. beautiful smile. And his smile was his so lips, gorgeous. Yeah, and was and he was real chill. He was a cop, but he'd look at you and then that smile would light up. Yes. And he'd look you oh. directly in the eyes. And I knew women was getting out of tickets with him. I knew women was putting it on him. No, he was because he was, and he was a motorcycle cop. He was mean, so I know he wasn't giving nobody up. Yeah, nothing. but I'm saying they but may you know not he got would out. Call me if it was a celebrity pulled over. He go back to his motorcycle and call me and be like, "Do you know such and such?" <laughs> I'd be like, "Yeah." I'd be like, "Get that help a ticket." <laughs> <laughs> But it was one celebrity that got out of a ticket because yeah, you knew it was her. Two of them. It was two of them. It's two of them. And one was not really uh, was too kind, and I was like, "So he's gonna th uh, get rid of that ticket for you? Cool. Yeah, I just want to let you know, or whatever." And they was like, "Yeah, whatever." I was like, "But you was drinking. You was drinking." Uh, <laughs> oh, damn. Don't say that. <laughs> this one no, is it's that. just hard to describe how like sexuality flowed yes. off of him. I keep wanting to say his name. But yeah, sexuality right. flowed off of him, and he had a, he had a real easygoing charm because he knew he was sexy. But he was in love with Kim with him. He really was. So what happened? I, uh, girl, damn. You know, you just uh, like, I don't know if we were talking about oh that on the air, but it just. Wow, he was sexy. He ghosted me. What? Yeah. He did. He ghosted me in a way that he didn't think he ghosted. So he argued back with me and said, I ghosted him. I was like, no, I got the receipts. You ghosted me because this is the thing. When you don't call me back, I don't yeah. call you back. I'm no, not. I'm not a chaser. I've never been a chaser, because my life life is so quick and fast, and it just happens. I can't. I ain't got time. I got a nine year old. I got. I got to keep moving. And there's yeah. so many men out there <laughs> that <laughs> need my attention. Right. That uh, Chris, I know. Don't get mm -hmm. upset. Oh, no. I got to keep it moving. And I just think keeping positivity. And I've seen so many broken women, and I've seen so much heartbreak. And I've had heartbreak before that I try to find out how to move on. And what I realize is that when you chase someone, you give up your power. Mm. I cannot, and I don't like that. And men don't want you to give up your power because men want to chase. Right. So what I've learned is you stay in a power position. It's hard. You might cry when nobody see you, but do I miss him because we were really good friends? Yes, I miss him because I, I miss the friendship. Yeah. And it was everything about our ancestral heritage of Africa, from the people that she had on there rapping and singing and dancing. She had Naomi Campbell. She had Lupita Nyong'o. She had all of these African artists. It was, Kim, it was stunning. I didn't know what was going on half the time, but she must have had 982 outfits that she changed into. Wow. Her body is the gift of a life, that body. It just, it was a take, it was her visual of her take off the Lion King and how she envisioned it. And it was, they did an SNL sketch. I don't know if you saw it where they said this entire black is king. They found out Beyonce was really black because there was, I don't know how white people gonna handle it. Cause I could barely handle it. I felt myself doing African dances, like and moving and grooving like an African. I'm not, I didn't, I don't even know how to do African dances, but I was like, voila, voila. I don't know what that means, but I kept screaming, voila, Africa, I'm home, Africa. Like it makes you want to do that. Oh my God. So a lot of people thought it was going to be a movie. You know that, right? Yeah, I know, but it was kind of like a long soundtrack, but it was, it was a visual, it was a visual type of soundtrack in her head. And, and I mean, she was the only one she, in all of the, the designs that she had, I heard were by African designers. You just got to see it. It just was stunning. Her, she had different hair changes. Kelly Rowland was in it. Her daughter, Blue Ivy, sang it, Brown Skin Girl. Remember that song, Brown Skin Girl? 
it was just uh i want you to watch it we'll watch it together because i need to watch it twice okay i will i love i, I love to give a Beyonce shout out to the whole family absolutely i can't wait to see it i i, I really i mean when beyonce I mean, she just every time i see her do something it, it's she puts in the work. Now that's some work ethic right there. So you know, and this is the thing I love about Beyonce and your friend, Mrs. Tina Lawson was also yes. in it. I love oh, about really? Beyonce. She was in it. And Beyonce, when it's a lot of work to make it look easy. That's mm -hmm. the thing. And so yes. you, everything that Beyonce did from the dances that she did with the women, it just took a tremendous amount of work. When she did Coachella, she just came off being pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I just appreciate her work ethic is beyond anything no, that is. I've ever seen. Yes. So, and that's why right. when you start, when you start saying, you know, I, uh, I want to be just like you, you got to be careful about what you're asking for. Yes. Because People, I mean, it, it, even our podcast, and we are not comparing it at all to Beyonce, mm -hmm. to make this podcast work and it looks so easy, like we're sitting here just talking, it's so much work behind the scenes. We're staying up late at night. I'm calling you, I'm calling Chris, mm -hmm. and we're having one hour discussions on how we can make it better and what we need to do. And, you know, you don't, you go to bed late doing it because you have some numerology stuff you're doing on some of our viewers and uh, yeah. listeners. And it's like, you know, you were up to this morning. So it's a lot of work to make it look easy. So just because you see something and it looks easy is usually people put in the work. So yeah, let's talk know. about why you got on a full face of makeup. Did you do your makeup this today? Yeah, I did. No, 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 no. Before you get your lips to lying, you did not do that face. I'm gonna tell you right now, that ain't your face. That ain't how you do your face. I've seen you do your makeup before. Right now, you look like a nice little porno star. You look real fresh and cute. When you do your makeup, you look like a man that's trying to wear makeup. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. What? Okay, you don't look like a man. You don't look like a man. I'm not going to say that. You look manly. Okay, nope, nope, nope. That's not good, too. You look harsh. When you put your face on, you look, because you, your lipstick, see your lips right now, nice and supple, and they all pretty. Look at you, look at you, look at you. You even think you cute. Look how you smiling and you looking at yourself on the screen. Yes, she is. Oh, That's Sherry Shepard. I Shepherd. forgot I had these. Look, and look I at forgot. You. you got boobies. Look at you. You put on a good bra today. That's when you can tell you feel good about yourself, Sherry. Look at you, how you looking at yourself. You looking at yourself like you want to sleep with yourself. I see it. I do. I can I do. tell. I do. I, do. I, do. I think, and I'm going to tell you why I have on a face full of makeup. Chris, is my sound okay? Because I'm not on the microphone. You're doing great. Okay, thank you. This is the reason why I see now how you talk to Chris. Makeup on him. See how you talk to Chris now. You even talk to Chris like a girl now. This is a trip. This is a trip. I don't because I usually talk to Chris like a dude. Like it's a little a softer. Boy. It's a little, a little it's, a, it's a little more uh, agreeable. Thanks, Sherry. You're absolutely welcome, yes. Chris. A yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Even the thank you. I know, because I usually am very harsh with Chris because I know what I want and I know what I got to do to get there. I think it's because also the reason why I'm so harsh with people sometimes and I feel really badly because we were talking on the phone and I said, gosh, my voice is getting on my nerves. I have two really big dogs and I have a big guard dog, Lexi, you've seen her, my Italian master. Yes, Kim, I can see the way you're looking. And um, I have to be oh. the alpha. Okay, go ahead, go ahead. I ain't never heard this one before. I'm going to blame it on the dogs. Every man I've ever cussed out and belittled is because of my dogs. Even though the it dogs I've only had for maybe 12 years. I've been mean to men for 20, but okay, here we go. Go ahead, I'm, try I'm listening. I'm trying to explain to you why I'm so harsh and maybe why this is a problem. I'm used to dealing with my guard dog who is an alpha. She's an Italian master, she's 130 pounds, she's trained to kill. So I have to be the alpha with her. Dogs typically, shut up. Dogs, that, that's my dogs right there. Oh my God. You don't hear it anymore, do you? Yeah. So dogs typically tend to respond to very deep voices. So I have to be real. I got to be the alpha with the dog. So I'm used to telling them, get out, sit down, stand up. No, go eat. Good girl. And I, and what I have found is that has transferred over to the way I talk about, talk to Chris. 
And I don't mean to talk to you that way, Chris. Not at all. So just so to recap, I, one, and of you, others. one of you has given me a Rottweiler fragrance and the other speaks to me as if I was a canine. Just, just clarifying. My mom said, honey, go on and get that baby. I said, why, mom? You know, she said, because you almost 90 years old. You ain't got no husband. You ain't got no kids. You Your mother said that, that to that you? That's what my mom, and you wonder what's wrong with me. That's what my mother said. She said, she, she did. She was like, you were almost 90. I was like, oh my God. Wow. She, she couldn't say, you know, you get a little long in the tooth. She gave it a name, a number. You almost 90. That's, and you ain't, know. wait, you ain't got no kids and you ain't got a man. So she Ooh. was like, you better go ahead and count your blessings. Go get that baby. So what were you thinking though? Because I remember we would have conversations and you were thinking about you, you like you, you were going through that maternal thing where you, you wanted a baby, but it wasn't anything that was 24 seven on your mind. No, so when you no. want to pick up Joshua and you hadn't even named him, cause we got to go no. through the naming process. It was called the baby. He was just a baby. When you were going to pick up this baby, what were you thinking? First of all, first of all, Sherry Shepard, I didn't have to pick up the baby. They delivered the baby like the store. Oh, <laughs> they said the lady, and all her name was the lady. I don't know who this woman is. I don't know her title. All I know is she was mean. She was like, I'm not playing with you. She said, we're going to put this baby in the system. That's what we're going to do. I said, well, got you. She, yeah, she was like, we're going to put this baby in the system. You know how many people want babies, newborns? Now you need to make a decision. She said, you got 20 minutes and I'm going to call you back. <laughs> Was like, wow, right he treated you like a bill collector. She did. Like you owe money. Like, okay. And I was like, uh, you work at the DMV on the weekends? <laughs> uh, she said, and then she said, okay, we'll give you two hours because we have to discharge the baby and you need to go get a bassinet and you need to go get a car seat. She said, those are the two things that you have to have in order to get this baby. I was like, uh, I said, do they even make bassinets anymore? I know that's that's like saying girdle. I was like, brazier. a bassinet? What is it? And she said, and so it was interesting because you know, my mom and dad were here and we went to Target or Walmart or somewhere and we were running around. My daddy is looking for the white bassinet. Remember made out of wicker with the hood yes. on it? He said, I, yes. I, my father was like, I don't see no bassinets. They, they don't have no bassinets. I've been looking all over. <laughs> I said, Daddy, they don't make those anymore. They're called play yards. So basically a play pen with the bed a and everything pen. and the car seat for the baby. You got to get a husband, girl. Oh, girl, let me explain something to y'all right now. It ain't about getting the husband. It is. It depends on who the husband is. I've been engaged six times. I've been oh, engaged. No. I know, see, Nikki. She <laughs> has I been engaged say, six times. But if I look through them dudes, let me explain something to y'all. Every husband ain't made to go out in the rain and work okay. on the roof. If I may no, interrupt for a minute, no, your I needs have changed. Really I really but really that's do. what I'm saying, baby. Your needs have changed. The six that you were engaged to, they can't do what you need them to do right here. So you do need somebody who what you need, not what you want. What you need is a man that's going to be able to come in there and take and, and do that kind of stuff. Also help you with Joshua. It's a different need now. The ones you had before. And I love and much respect to Gerald, who was one of the Gerald loves of your life, Gerald Levert, who but wanted to marry you. Right now, Gerald Levert would not have been, would not have been the husband that you need because he'd have been on tour while the shed is flooding. Right, right. But he I couldn't take Joshua to get a cold test. Down list. Gerald Levert would it. call you. Gerald Levert would call you at 11 and you go, Gerald, the shed flooding, Joshua acting up. He'd be like, baby, hold on to me. <laughs> I never let you down. That's all he could do for you on the phone. That's true. And he goes, take your clothes off. <laughs> I love him. I bought it on the whim. I had some, uh, I had some Moscato. And so I bought it on the whim. What was that uh, hand movement? She was supposed to come. She was supposed to, she, that was her, her little, I, yeah. you know. I bought this one when Sherry flings her fingers when she's talking and she says, I, I, I did it. That's you either she's gonna buy some expensive art or get married. So you gotta watch. Well, I'm not getting married. 
go out buy some expensive art. This art was like, whoa. But you are a collector of art. Like I'm looking at all of the, the I don't know what they're called, canvases and things. That it's, you don't, this is it's too much, Kim. I'm going to figure it out. I don't know what you're going to do. I know I could let lighten that load and take a piece. I done gave it a piece of me and you. <laughs> yeah, it's always about you. I gave you a piece of me and you. There's a piece that Kim has, a beautiful piece of a black woman oh with her shirt down. You can see the crack of her butt. I don't know who that artist is, but it's gorgeous. Carlos Spivey. Carlos Spivey. And, 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 and I and want that. I, and uh, Rodney and brought it downstairs. I said, don't bring that downstairs. He said, you should hang this. I said, no, because then Sherry's going to see it. Yeah. That, yeah. That, <laughs> Carlos Spivey. And this is like. She can't lift it, so I ain't worried about it. Take it. It's so heavy and it's Go gorgeous and beautiful. But anyway, so no. tell them what's going on, because I, I interrupted you. You got all these people working on your house. So my family is coming to visit. And I've realized that I have been living like I'm in college mm. for 30 years. And I decided to grow up. And so yeah, in like four days, she decided to grow up. Four days. Proud of you. They'll be here any day. In two days, they'll yes. be here. Oh, no, you should see Saturday. I had 20 people in this house. I know. Andre I had, told me. That's right. Two organizers. Andre was the... Uh, uh, the caretaker, he was responsible for everything. I and you had, did a photo shoot with Caroline Ray did a at the same time. It's all insane. This is the mind of Kim. Like, she's completely overwhelmed, but she has 20 people in her house working, painting, the, oh, the, yeah, about the painting the walls, restaining tables, tables and hardwood, putting up new uh, light fixtures, electrician. Ain't got no furniture. Everything no furniture. Out. It ain't clearing clean. out, moving stuff to the garage. And she has a photo shoot going on at the <laughs> same time with Caroline Ray. And this is the day she decides to try to do sexy. Oh, yeah. At the same time. Sweating and and then crazy. Caroline Ray is going on and on and on because she's sensitive about her weight, but then wants to know where's the sugar. She does so true. DeAndre told me everything. We were sitting in the jacuzzi. Oh, my God. I, DeAndre was just like, and then, wait, and then Kim was walks out. What? We were, we were in my jacuzzi. You were in the jacuzzi. Oh, that's why I couldn't find his black ass. <laughs> <laughs> no phone was all the way at the other side. We started out in the pool. Me and Andre, because Jeffrey was sick from a second COVID shot, so he was asleep upstairs with a fever. So I gave him fever reducer. So me and Andre, we were in the pool swimming, working on our swimming strategy, and it was so warm. Then we got to, we went to the jacuzzi. And it was a hot bath time when we were sitting. And his phone kept ringing. It was me. Oh, is it? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm looking for the caretaker, uh, the dude, the, the warden. That's supposed to be Oh, gosh. Everything. Oh, my God. No, you was in the jacuzzi with me. We was having a good time. His mm -hmm. last episode, we had with the bright idea to do green screens because we ordered the light kits from oh, yeah. Amazon. And they came with you the green ordered them. I did. I ordered two light kits and they came with like green curtains. So I had the bright idea, Kim, let's do green screen and have a background. So Kim, what did you choose? I chose a strip club. You And I chose a bedroom, but your strip club looked like um, something a off kid. the Carnival Cruise Line. <laughs> Did. That's what Sybil Wilkes from the Tom Joyner Morning Show said. She said, did this come straight from the Carnival Cruises, your background? <laughs> and mine kind of, it was a bedroom, but it, it looked like something at the rehab center. So that kind of didn't work for us. So we're not going to do green. I've gotten rid of my green uh, curtain. Where's yours? Up there. It's still, <laughs> I, I stayed with it to the ceiling. Oh, see, that's kind of sexy, though. Green curtains stapled up right. on the ceiling. So we're, we're achieving when you bring them down when you're ready, girl. And speaking of thinner, I do have to say the Oscars just happened. And Kim did some pre-Oscar uh, events for E! Entertainment. You got to see this outfit that she chose. Look at her. You got this Ooh, la red and la. This oh. red sequin jumpsuit with black necklaces and jewelry, and your hair looked tray chic. You look so glam. And you picked out that hair. Thank you. Because you had, because <laughs> Kim had three different types of hair, and I thought this was more 
of Hollywood, the, glam. More Hollywood glam. And it got picked up a lot of places. It got picked it. up a lot of places. And here's the thing, Chris, Kim actually had this dress on that was a sequin dress. It was short, but it had these pointed collars like, here comes the Jetsons. <laughs> I did. The, the collars were so pointed. And I said, you can't wear that dress. And then she showed me that red right. jumpsuit with jacket. It was so chic and grown up. Oh my gosh, are you sending that one to Chris? Send, I'm gonna send, you send the him the full body? Should I send him the other one? Yeah, I didn't send yeah, him the Send him the full body, because they need to send the full whatever body. whatever you got, yeah. Let's see. Send whatever I got, but this one I gotta see. That other one I gotta yeah. see, too Here. dangerous to see. I'm gonna send this over while we're that. while we're waiting on that. Let's see. I'm gonna send this. Yeah, right send that dress. That's the one I want you to send to Chris. The one that, that the, you look crazy as hell. So she put on the red, and you look so good. And people really liked the outfit. They really did. So I want you to send that to Chris. Don't do oh, all sure. this editing. We well, I had to because Chris. I don't know what Chris gonna be doing with these pictures. He's gonna be <laughs> with his hand. Tonight at 11 o'clock is what he's going to be doing. It's almost 11 here, actually, now. So. He will at, at 1. As soon as he gets done with this podcast, Chris going to take that picture like a dirty old man and be like, <laughs> <laughs> like Gala. Is that a Gala in man Chris that kind of know Chris at know one point the pictures. <laughs> With this picture, I'll make that. No I'll give you Sherry. I was about to give you trouble about that noise too. Like who that? What kind of people have you been with? But now I see this photo and it's uh, it's erupting in me. I I, I agree. There's it's erupting. It's, it's erupting. erupting. I that's love that saying. word. That's exactly what. But well, that's saying. what I was gonna wear. And she told me not to wear that. That's yes, that's so from that. your uh, your short film you did with uh, Wayne Brady. Where you two were the <laughs> space invaders. Where she played a space cadet. That's right. This yeah. picture had the pointiest collars I've ever and seen. And she was like, no, you and can't was, wear that. It was the loud yellow and green. Here, and it we was got it. Just, I didn't, oh, you got it? Yeah, I just, just a second, it, we'll have it up. It was yeah. Oscar Right, maybe worthy. it wasn't Oscar worthy. It wasn't, wasn't, um, the word would be yeah, and elegant. It I wasn't think. elegant. When you and go you to the well, they were talking about that about uh, Andre Day. They said her, it, you know, she had on that gown, but her her booty was hanging out in the back. The what? split was so high. I saw on the news they they zoomed in and you could see her butt cheek hanging out. And they were like, you think that that maybe they didn't have time to alter the dress? Well, no, because it was made that way. The split, and they said when she turns around, it looks like a beautiful full gown, like mm -hmm. very chic and you know elegant. They said, but when she turns the other way, they were like, uh, that's not appropriate for the Oscars. Oh my gosh. It was a little stanky, but well, that's, she's it was, not she was the sexy. first that has, that's what Kim was going to wear. This bright yellow and <laughs> green trifocal, trifold dress, and if it, the collars are so pointed. But that's fashion forward when you wear stuff like that. No, you that's- Look at Regina King, she always Reg like she on the space cadet uh, about to launch. But something about Regina King's was just really, cause they're always long, classy dresses. This looked like you were going to club Saturn. <laughs> She's going to that. She's going to that bar in Star Wars, right? Where all He's the trouble's going, going down. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. him look like like she was going to the bar Sherry, in Star Wars? Can you consult me on this? How am I supposed to feel? Pop that back up real quick. Sorry. How am I supposed to feel to feel when the Lord is that close to what I'm staring at? Like, what do, what are you supposed to do with the cross necklace in the middle? Like, that's just <laughs> conflicting. Well, Kim's boobs are so out; they're busting out of the dress, and she's got it cross. In between them, the okay. Jesus Christ cross. Uh -oh. I don't know what you was trying to say. Come, I'm gonna give you some heaven, but you're going straight to hell. <laughs> I don't know what it is. She is. What? We should call Kim the praying mantis for sure. That is her. Oh, yeah. the praying yeah. mantis. I yeah. like but that. But the outfit, I, I still think this outfit is great. I just didn't think it was as appropriate for the Oscars. Like maybe the after party, the Oscars okay. like was going to the, the, You could have changed into this, but for you hosting something, I thought that the red was very chic. And you got a lot of play from it. So kudos. You look great. Yes. Kim Whitley in her, the full jumper with the sequin blazer. No. It just looked beautiful. You got it on? Yep. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
25, right? Yeah. That's 25. Okay. Okay. One, two, three, four. There it is. Five. Good job. Good job. Girl. Was that 30? Yes. I think I gotta do five more. What? What? I think it's 35. Hold on, I need to do this one, two, three, four, five. I'm with you. I distract uh, him a lot. Andre getting fans, so now he gonna be doing all this. <laughs> He's been reading the comments, hasn't he? Yes, I, I do know, Chris. Exactly. Andre, yeah, Andre been reading them damn comments. Ooh, Andre, cute. Ooh, Andre, him and Chris. Y'all, y'all is really serving it up with these two gentlemen, Chris and Andre. Even Andre's mama took a picture of her and her, <laughs> all the old ladies that hang out with her, her friends talking about, you need to, this is what his mama said. Chris, Andre's mother sent a picture, was like, you need to get in there more because they'll make you a regular. <laughs> She said, let them make you a regular. It was so beautiful. And mm -hmm. I want to thank Andre's mom and all the OGs that are hanging with you, listening to Two Funny Mamas. And she did. She loved on her son and sent a picture. And she said, Andre, insert yourself more because they'll use you more. <laughs> oh, we use him all right, mama. We do use him, Guess mama. Guess who call your son daddy. <laughs> My mom turned it on on YouTube, and I was like, you turn that off. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. I love you. And that's the thing. If you did Wendy Williams, you would get ratings. People would turn in because they, you, they it would feel like they was on a roller coaster ride. <laughs> so you well, would show them what I would do in the chair. You, you'd be this. They'd be like, and you'd be like, you'd be like, how you doing? Then you'd be like, how you, ooh, wait a minute. Yo, I love your shirt. How you, ooh, how you, oh, wait a minute. Okay, what was, what, what, what was we talking about? Okay, how, how you, how you, okay, Norman, you, ooh, how you, oh, how you, oh, how you do, how you do, and then you go, it's time for a hot topic, you do your little cute walk over to the chair, and then you be sitting there, you be like, so Norman, you know what happened, <laughs> Pete Davidson, Pete Davidson, and Kim Kardashian, they dating, but you know, Norman, you know, I heard Pete Davidson got the, ooh, Pete Davidson got it, <laughs> hang low, sweet cherry, Pete Davidson. So anyway, listen, listen, we gonna be back with more Hot Topics after this. That's exactly what your ass will be doing on Wendy Williams. The fact that you had the, the rock. The that, rock. That's what you be doing. Norman and Suzanne would be, they'd be in the prompter. Kim, stop rocking. You'd be like, what? What? <laughs> back and forth on the Wendy Williams show. Wendy would get up out of her sick bed and go, what is wrong with this bitch on my damn show? <laughs> And, and let me tell you something. And there would be people that would tune in because you like you doing that. They're like, she rocking. She rocking. <laughs> Your ass, the prompter right here, you be like, listen, listen. <laughs> and since it's so organic and we have fun, you've been so honest. I feel like I need to share something with you that I've been hiding. I, I, I didn't want you to know. <laughs> I didn't want you to know this. The but bullshit. while you were talking, because I didn't want you to see me eat another ginger snap. I broke them up in itty bitty pieces <laughs> and I was sneaking them ever so slightly <laughs> in my mouth while you were talking. Damn it, Kim. She, she didn't broke them down into one fourth points. <laughs> A quarter point now. Because I felt like if he sees me grab another whole ginger snap, he's gonna call the people. He's gonna call the WW people. Kim, this means uh, Kim. This means Kim can cheat. That's what that tells me. Yes, that's, that's she's I'm fantastic. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, she's fantastic. I do know that how was, to cheat, but would I? I would that, never cheat yes. on you, Chris. Thank you, Kim. Tell tell the people what you said to me. I don't know what I was doing to you, but I told you when we had. 
our three second board meeting because that's all I can get from you is three seconds. We we <laughs> met for three seconds and I said, Kim, we got to upgrade now because we're we're getting this national exposure uh, and we need to we got to get you a makeup artist. We got to get somebody to do your makeup. I didn't know you were gonna go off. I don't I don't know what issues you have. No, no, no. It's not about issues. No, 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 Sherry Shepard. What you said was, uh, 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 well, um, you know, uh, we, you know, our show is getting national attention and uh, we're going to need to upgrade. You know, we're on Good Morning America and such. And, I mean, and they're highlighting you. Um, we're going to have to get you a makeup artist. Now, <laughs> this is the problem, people. I want you to understand and hear me. Sherry was doing her own makeup and I was helping her out. She came on looking like a raggedy prostitute from down by the river. Her, <laughs> she, her wig, her makeup, she looked toe back. So but she gonna talk to me and tell me to get my makeup done. So this morning, I didn't do my makeup in 15 minutes. I didn't wake up, not shower, put my clothes on, throw on a wig and do the podcast like I've been doing. I took 45 minutes. I decided, go ahead, put your makeup on right. So Sherry Shepard know that you got an art degree. You went to college. You can paint a face. Go I didn't know you had a degree in arts from Fisk University. Yes. Is that what your degree is in? That's what my degree is in, art. So if I can't do a little makeup, then shame on me and shame on Fisk University. But they taught me how to be a fine artist. Sometimes when I come on here looking like a man, it's because I was tired. Well, Chris was getting telling me to hurry up. I don't know. Well, morning, I don't everybody. know. That good morning, everybody. I just had to say that additional uh, 30 minutes that you gave yourself has changed the world. You look amazing. Your skin uh, and 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 by the way, I your your skin color looks great. What is going on with the lighting? Because before we had such a problem with your lighting, people were complaining you were too light, you were too dark. What happened? You happened, Sherry Shepard. Let me explain. <laughs> to you. What does that mean? Are you staring at me all <laughs> weird? What do you mean I happened? This is the problem. Let me explain a couple things to you. Okay, first of all, okay, a couple. I got myself together. And I did my face. But what happened was my face has really been down, but the people could not see the quality of my work <laughs> because you made me turn the lights off. You was like, oh, you're too bright. People say you too. I am of a certain color, okay? Black people come in all shades and color. My heart is black as it can get. My heart is so black, <laughs> it's on me purple. But I can't help it that the outside, that my soul chose this color skin, this is what the Lord made me, and this is the color. But you want to change the lighting. That's what you did, because you want me to be brown skin. That's what you did. So you told me, oh, it's too bright. So I done closed all the windows, turned off the light. I look at our podcast, and I do. I look tired and old. But when you put the light on you, it showed my makeup. It brightened up my face. That's what happened. You're a hater. 12 years. We've been married 11, been together 12 you know he's 16 years younger than me and acts 16 years older. Oh, I need, that's what I need. See, people be judging me. No, can't fuck right? what they talking about. Ain't nobody paying your bills and giving you no ass but that person that you love. <laughs> <laughs> so, it's always people so that So, Chris, they, we can make it. That's they right. That's, that's our move. That's, we got the blessing, the B-flat blessing. Thank you. Don't really? nobody say that to these older gentlemen. They show sure don't. That date these young girls that don't know how to do shit. Right, right. I said all the time my friend was having a stroke, and this girlfriend thought to me he was doing a stanky leg. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> a <laughs> Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It's like it's going out. What? Girl, she it's, was like, don't tell nobody, but it's true. His leg was going out? She thought he was dancing. I'm like, get it, daddy. <laughs> Bitch, he having a stroke. <laughs> I thought you said, but dating a 22-year-old that don't be around her parents and recognize a stroke. If you are a parent. <laughs> the signs of a parent. stroke. <laughs> the signs of a stroke. If you're going to, I tell you, Kim, most men our age, mm -hmm. when they're 45, have had, they don't take care of themselves like women do. No. They don't. 
Women our age are caught up in trying to still look young, taking better care of yourself, making yeah. sure you still got it because your kids is grown and off to school. Well, unless you uh, waited. Yeah, and, but and until <laughs> you're an exception to the rule. Yes. You and my girlfriend, Kelly. But I think most men, when they're in like their 50s, and their, they just let themselves go. Because they be like, oh, married, I got a wife. Look yeah, it's the when they married and got a wife thing. And I feel like you think about it when you go back to the class reunion and you see the foot, the quarterback and you'd be like, is he the janitor or was he the quarterback? <laughs> right. Right. And then all the women walk in looking fly. Yep. The women do walk in looking fly. We take better care of ourselves than men this age. And they normally have strokes and heart. So my friend, even though he's like a runner and do all this stuff, he still e horrible. The shit that he used to do is catching up with him, but he still think he can date women. Oh, this, Twenty. Oh, this is a friend of yours. Uh huh. They had a stroke. And he fifty two. Has he been married before? No. Oh. I always dated young girls. I said, "Well, it's fine. At least teach them how to recognize the, the signs, signs of a stroke." I, so, no, you understand. I said, if I <laughs> if I can get a man, mm -hmm. this one I know he loves me. If I can get a man to reach over me, hold on, let me get that, and pull like a hair out my neck. Yeah, <laughs> you gonna get that just like I told That's Sherry. What you know, because I was like, where do these things come from? When a man can pull over, because that means he don't care, but he, he don't, don't want you either. going out looking like a witch. So I, you gonna find that person? And I told Sherry the same thing because she's like. He don't mind if I don't sleep with my wig. He's like, take your wig. I said, that's right. You don't need to be sleeping in that shit. He needs right. to see all your gray hair, gray this, gray coochie hair, gray unknown hair. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait a minute. First of all, what have you got? First of all, you done went too far. I'm just saying. There's a limit. I know that's right. What's the limit? What's the limit? First of all, who got gray underarm hair? I, okay, this gray. I know, people. They got great underarm hair? Yeah. If they didn't save it, I'd be like, bitch, you got great. You better go and save up under there. If she got great underarm hair, I know her coochie done went white. Thank you. This ain't no wrong with going white. But that's how you know the person loves you. They don't care about all of that. When my neck starts moving, this wig is falling off. You're making me mad. What that's about what you do wearing a cheap wig. Go ahead. Okay. There's a couple things. Cheap wigs stubby legs that don't belong in this conversation i apologize i didn't i take that. that back you only you got stubby why women should run the world you see how quick you were to apologize and god was wrong i apologize this yes. is the problem with me, why a woman should be president right now because a woman can say i'm sorry yes can we move forward Men have such pride issues and they can't do that. Pride? Right you go. By the way, I don't accept your apology, but I'm saying it was great what you did. It was a great teaching lesson, but I don't accept your apology at all. So anyway, what I was saying, oh, you God. say, I still love you. I can still love you. Like, I'm not mad at you or anything. I'm just saying I'm not accepting your apology because you don't get okay. to apologize and I accept it and we just move on like nothing happened. Oh, you said oh, that's it, you fine. said it, you meant it, you said it. Okay, anyway, love you. <laughs> Yes, you're six feet. <laughs> this is when you know you've been friends with somebody too long. I still am accepting your apology. But when you're you're six feet away, you're right in the grocery store. You're six feet away. But when you have to go through that line, they just started installing plexiglass glass. When you go through the line to pay for your your purchases, you are yeah. not six feet away from the cashier. The cashier is wearing a mask. And in your case, you're wearing a full freaking hazmat suit, Kim. Yep, I got you're it all on. Away. That doesn't happen. When you're ordering from the deli, you're not six feet away from that person. They're not but touching my hand and my feet. We got masks she's got on. She's got gloves on, Kim. She's got gloves on. But I know you. Gloves. But I know you. Okay, I'm going to ask one question. We're going to shut it all down. Watch this question, everybody. Mm -hmm. Sherry Shepard. Yes. Did you have on a mask while the woman was doing your feet and your, and your hands? I'm going to be honest with you. I bought this for my birthday, Kim. I have 52 days to get in. Now, I'm not saying my body looks like hers because she's 20 years younger than me, maybe 25. But uh -huh. I want to wear that jumpsuit on my birthday. Okay, can I, can I bring up something? I'm not hating. I'm not doing anything. Okay, I'm, very, I'm in Canada by myself. I'm very fragile. So think about what you got to say to me. <laughs> oh, I'm just I'm saying. About I've, been, I've been thinking about it since I saw it on your Instagram. What do you need to say? Hit the so, mute button when I tell you to, Chris. Okay, what? <laughs> 
What? So, oh, wait, let me uh, tell the listeners. Describe the okay. suit to our listeners who can't see okay. the jumpsuit Okay, listeners, it is a red jumpsuit that's very tight. And let me tell you something. It's from her toes, tight all the way up through the vaginal area, stomach, <laughs> breast. Vaginal area. And then it has shoulder pads, a turtleneck, a little cutout on the chest. Then it goes all the way down the arm, and the girl has on red gloves, and she has long black hair and red lips. Absolutely sexy for December. Your birthday's in April. You will be on fire. You put that on and take a picture. People gonna be like, "Oh, something wrong with Sherry." So what I want you to do is find something else to wear. You're Kim, not gonna you put this on on your birthday. Kim. Not on my watch. Nope. Absolutely okay, first, not. I want to let you, you know can something. Find something else. You don't wear a red jumpsuit with gloves and shoulder pads. It's a winter jumpsuit. We can okay, find first you of all. Okay, I'm not going to. Okay, go ahead. Stop talking. Stop talking. <laughs> Jeez. And I hope that people got to see how bossy you actually get off camera. Oh, it's, this it's a is a statement piece. I'm not wearing it with red gloves because I'm going to have long red nails. And I'm going to have like stiletto heels. I will have the long hair that hangs down in my butt. Look at the sleeves. It doesn't matter. Kim, this is one of those chic, sophisticated. It's a statement piece. All it is is to make a statement. I'm not going to the Dodger Stadium to watch a baseball game with this thing on. I will put it on, take the picture, and it's. this is the picture that everybody's going to run. That's what I'm saying. When you guys say, oh, we want to wish Sherry Shepard, she turned 55, if y'all show pictures, that this is a picture that's going to spark discussion. Not a sundress, because it's in April. It's a statement piece. That's it. I didn't say, I didn't say a sundress, but I... It doesn't you know, matter that it's in April. Sport. That's that's something that you would wear I, in April at nighttime. If you went to a restaurant with Dr. Dre and he took you out, that's something you would wear to a, a, a red carpet event or a club. It's a statement piece. That's all. I'm not wearing it again. We're going to read the comments and see what they say, but I don't reflect if back on this moment thing, and say, you know what? Kim tried to tell me not to wear the long sleeve winter uh, little statement piece. No, because in I'm April, is, so we, we have global warming. First of all, it's probably still going to be cold in April, Kim. It's not even going to be warm. That's the beginning of spring. If they're looking at that versus my belly, because that's what I got to get together, then I'm good. But I have 52 days. Are you going to wear it without a uh, foundation? Undergarment. I want to wear, I want to, because people keep saying, Sherry, you look like that now, which I don't. Here's the deal. I'm able to hold my, I got strong stomach muscles. So I'm able to hold my stomach in when I take pictures and I wear foundations that pull you in. I would like to be able to put that thing on without having to hold my stomach in, without the foundations. So I got 52 days to okay. tighten up and get my body, which is going to require me to go into another level, another mode of goal setting. And my goal is to get into that. So if you would like to join me, cause it's gonna be some challenges, the push-up challenge, the sit-up challenge, working out a lot more and really cutting out and really making my stuff lean. And this is really just to, for my birthday to fit into this outfit and for it to be, you know, tight and looking good to show people that life is not over just because you are in your 50s. Even in the beginning of Baby Got Back where the two white girls are like, oh, look at her butt. It's so big. Uh, yes. Like there was a time when black girls ruled big booties and, and white girls, did. it wasn't a thing to have a big booty. You didn't want to have a big booty. If you're a white you girl sure and you had a big booty, you would wear a sweater. They would wear sweaters over their butt because it was like, it was a bad thing to have. No, a they still booty. do. They still do. White girls Not that as I much know though, that have. No, no, no. Younger. Some, this is, wait, this. Uh, check this out. Why? You ready? Yeah. White girls who have big butts. I've talked to them, and, and I said, "Well, why do you come? Why do you?" She said, "It attracts a lot of black guys." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Was that like, is. Yeah. What? She was like, "Yeah." <laughs> but the brothers be on them, and I guess if that's not what you went to, you're like, I'm gonna cover this uh, brother catcher. It's called the brother catcher. <laughs> <laughs> it's a is that what you call it? A uh, a uh, a big mm -hmm. booty on a white girl, a brother catcher. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Can, we catcher. Can, yeah. we can we make a t shirt? Can we can we trademark that a brother catcher? Brother. That is a, a brother. I got a brother catcher. 
Yeah. Chris, start working on that T-shirt. Okay, I got a brother got catcher. Bro- brother and it's only for white girls. A. Brother with an A and apostrophe, right? <laughs> oh, a brother God. catcher. There you go. But yeah, Nate, before your time, it used to be white girls, like flat and small was it. Yeah. Having a big butt, big lips. All of that was for those girls. These women over here, they're like, uh, I love Andre. Uh, where is he located? I love Chris. Can we have a Chris and Andre fan club? I'm like, we haven't even started our fan club. Which- okay, first of all, they will get cut out the show. Y- you ain't the- never lied. Keep I got the mic control and you can lock Andre out. Here, let's I show them real lock- quick. Watch how quick it happens. You guys keep being positive and nice about me. Watch what happens. So Sherry, I'm walking through here and here's what, now Kim has control of this. At any point, she can make me. <laughs> do you, do you hear that? You hear that silence, that golden silence? Like Frankie Beverly May is talking about. Well, See what happens? Are you ready? Are you ready to come back on, Chris? Okay, here goes. Keep it up, though. Hey, thank you. I'll uh, I'll step back. There we go. I tell you, and I will tie Andre up one of them weight balls he got over here. <laughs> In a row, what y'all getting a little too, y'all getting a little too cocky, a little too yeah, cocky, a little, little cocky. <laughs> I love it. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Andre. We love both of y'all. Um, it was a good so, run for Andre. It was a good run for the two of us. It was a good run while it, it lasted. Your it mama gonna be it. so mad, Andre. How, baby, how you get fired already? Already. We Just love. Got in thank you. Yeah, because had I called you instead of my friend Vonda, because Vonda told me don't let a side piece into my marriage. No, 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 no. You should have called me instead of Vonda. I'd have. You still be married. Had you called me and not Vonda, you'd still be married because I'd have told you, go ahead. You pick the side piece. He can't pick it. You pick the side piece. Bring the side piece in. She's going to have to sign the NDA that she can't be suing you and telling stuff. You don't get no key heifer to the house, but I'm going to need you to come over here and do some stuff, right? She got to watch Jeffrey on Fridays because then that cuts your bill on the nanny bill. So you ain't going to be all up in my son's face and be his friend but you're going to watch him on Fridays, okay? That's what you need her for because that's going to take the pressure off of what you had to do, okay? That's that right there. You need to say, I would have helped you. Your marriage would have been fine. You might have even started liking him again because of the okay. side piece because then you'd have told the side piece, I need you to talk to him on Mondays and Wednesdays so I ain't got to hear all that that he be talking about don't say nothing. You tell a side piece to shut her mouth. You look in his eyes lovingly like you care about everything he says because I ain't got time for that because I'm a host on The View and I got Barbara Walters. I got to look at her like that. So I need you to look at him and listen to all his dreams. Boom. Your marriage should been saved. I'm glad I didn't talk to you. I, I'm, I'm glad <laughs> what? I didn't have a conversation with you. That was brilliant. It was. Are you kidding me? It was, but I, yeah, it's. And have her come in and wash dishes in the middle of the week. She can't just get all that good loving and 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 be able to tell her friends. Oh, you know, uh, uh, me, Sherry, and her husband, we a thruple. You know, she can't. <laughs> what did you call it? A thruple. A, a thruple. There's three people, three people couple. Yes, yeah, y'all the thruple because she's going to be bragging to her friends. You know, I'm the side piece of Sherry's husband. So, you know, Sherry be looking at me. We all friends. And then she don't get that right without coming in, doing some dishes, pick up some toys, walk the dogs. No. Kim, once a week, she's got to burn. She has to cook dinner, but she has to purposely burn the food to remind the husband yeah. that, you know, your cooking's the best. And she has to lose to Jeffrey in a video game twice a week. Oh, absolutely. No, she got to always lose to Jeffrey. Now, that that's a rule. Chris, I appreciate okay. your, your help. Thank you, Chris. I got you. Your Got your back. Got your back. I'm gonna, we're going to get off the side piece uh, discussion, and we're going to go to something more um, positive. <laughs> but you know <laughs> you're thinking about it. You know you're thinking about it. Well, I'll keep it in mind. It won't be a next time, but I will keep it in mind. Maybe okay. we'll write a little pamphlet. We're going to go with to go with the side piece slogan. We help you be number two. We'll do a little Boom. pamphlet that we can pass there out the rules, the guidelines, the guidelines. Thank you, Kim, for that. 
made a brain fart on the view. It was, I think my first week or my second week. Uh, and I said, I didn't know if the earth was round or flat, which by the way, I do know that the earth is flat. We already, everybody knows that. And so I had done a brain, I just was joking. I was joking. Please girl, <laughs> just for that, I'm gonna eat my banana. I'm gonna eat my banana. You gonna sit here and crack your little funny jokes on our podcast and they be like, oh shit. I just had to, that was so funny to me. Um, I do know that the earth is round, but I was very, very nervous. And here's what I wanna speak about. I was nervous because I was sitting at the table with very accomplished women. All the way to my right was Whoopi Goldberg, someone that I have admired all through my career. She's a best friend, auntie in my head. And I wanted my my career to kind of pattern Whoopi's. So, you know, and Whoopi talks very deep. And then next to her was Joy Behar who was an accomplished comedian. She was very like, Joy Behar was a history teacher and she's very intellectual. Mm. And then on the left of me was Elizabeth Hasselbeck, who, you know, she graduated from college with these degrees. She's very smart. And then on the, on the super left was Barbara Walters, a woman who created this show, who has interviewed every sitting president. Trump was her last interview and she'd been all over the world. She was very well read and accomplished. And then you start feeling like, I sat at the table and I started feeling like, okay, but what do I bring? What am I worth? Cause I didn't go to college. You know, me and my whole, I really want to go to college to get my degree. I didn't go to college. I did extremely well in high school uh, because I was Jehovah's witness. My parents would not let me go to college. And um, I, you know, I just had kind of jobs that supported me doing stand up comic comedy. So I kind I felt so inadequate in between these women. And I felt like I wasn't as smart as these women. I felt like I didn't have the conversation that these women had. And so when the time came, when we were talking about evolution versus creationism, I had this brain fart. And I think a lot of women go through that of not feeling worthy to be in the room, of not feeling like they add value to a situation and do So a, for our a, listeners, a we both have on shiny outfits. I have on Sherry's dress. You, yes, you're wearing my dress and I've just forgiven you. Now I'm mad again. Um, I took it out your house. Like you take stuff out mine. Really? Yeah, That's what we're doing? Back. As a no, matter of no, fact, I get stuff you, back and I leave stuff at your house. Oh no, I got I got this daggone Wheel of Fortune sweatshirt over here. I'm about sick of it. That laying over here on the floor. It's been here. So you decided fortune. to put the blue sequin dress on. What? Yes, Let me see I that did. ring. Let me see that ring. Let me what see the ring? ring you got on your finger. Mm -hmm. I, I don't have any rings. Yeah, let me see that ring you got on your finger. What? You got my ring on too. That's a flat. I don't have any rings. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> Why would you think? <laughs> I had, when I had my garage sale, you took a bunch of stuff. I gave Ooh. you a bunch of stuff. Ooh, I got what, some that, good stuff. That ring. Cause you wasn't in your right mind. You was throwing boxes out there. You was frustrated. I was like, what is wrong with this heifer? I didn't tell her, but I was like, I'm gonna keep this stuff. Cause it's some good stuff. She gonna want it one day. And then I was like, <laughs> I'm gonna keep it. She didn't know what she now you want now. the ring. And now when she sees I'm it, she's like, Ooh. Ooh I yeah, I want that ring back. That's a ring that I wear when my fingers, when I lose enough weight and my fingers can fit it. Wait, there it is again. Put it up in the air. I don't know why you keep saying that. I don't have no rings on. She is tripping. So tell me something. How did you start in this business? Girl, I started in radio bitch by calling in the radio station. I moved to Dallas in 1989. Called the radio station Russ Parr. I don't know what I told him on the air, but honey, he liked it. And I kept on calling every damn day until eventually, honey, like when Russ would go out on remotes, I would go meet him out on remotes. Him and Alfredas, and I would go meet them out in the remotes, girl, and honey, he would pay me $20, girl. And sometimes he would give me tickets to the event. And I um I just started doing I did that and then eventually I said, Okay, Russ, I'm tired of this. I wanna get on I wanna get hired by the radio station. So girl, he said, Well, apply. So I applied at the radio station and they hired me, girl. They gave me a job. I was an associate producer. Oh okay. and what did that entail, bitch? I was the telephone operator. People were calling, I want to request Lil Wayne. <laughs> Bitch, I would write Lil Wayne down. That was the social producer, baby. So I did that for a while, but I was happy, honey, because in the meantime, I was in the medical field because I was going to school to be an RN. My mama wanted me to be a nurse. So I was going to school to be an RN, so I was doing radio, playing with that, and working in the medical field. So eventually, after that happened, after, uh, with um, a social producer, I'll never forget, I went to Cancun for a vacation. Came back, bitch, the station was gone. 
they had to flip it over, honey. It was no longer hip hop, honey. So I um hung around and I got hired, honey, as a, um in the, uh, the promotion department. So I worked the promotions for a little while. You to get you know drive up and down the street, honey, in the van, giving out prizes. And then along came a man named Steve Harvey. Steve Harvey came to Dallas. He was working in L.A. and in Dallas. So um, when he would come to the station, I would just sit down and go in the studio and talk shit to him. So eventually Steve gave me a job when he hired me as a hor- I was doing the horoscopes because um, he didn't want me to do celebrity gossip because, you know, he was a celebrity. And he wanted to talk about his colleagues. So mm-hmm. I did the horoscopes. And he changed my name from Gary to Drew because his producer name was Gary. He was white, so they called him White Gary and they called me Gay Gary. So I did that. <laughs> so, so I worked with him. I did the, um, the um, uh, horoscopes. And then Steve stayed for a little while and he left. So he had a party at the um, Playboy Mansion in Beverly Hills. So he flew me down to the Playboy Mansion to his party and stuff. And then there was a guy named Ricky Smiley. So then Ricky Smiley, I met Ricky Smiley. He came to Dallas, he took over this thing. So I was doing radio at the time, but um, um, the program director, he didn't want me to work on the radio. So I got hired as Ricky's uh, um, assistant. So I worked as his assistant for what, eight years. And um, I told him, I said, Ricky, you know I do radio, which he knew I did because Steve had already told him. But nevertheless, they let me, um, the program director say, well, we'll let him do radio, but he's gonna do it one day a week. So I did um, radio, they let me do the gossip one day a week. Well, I'm like, okay. His rigged manager said, Gary, do that shit as if it's going to be a year. Work hard at it. So I did it for one day a week. Then I took two days a week, Mondays and Wednesdays. Then I did it from Monday, Wednesdays to Monday, Wednesdays and Fridays. Then, because the gospel was so good, bitch, they had to put it on every day during the week. It was so great. They said, well, we can't do it one time. Or do it. They started doing it twice a week, uh, twice a day, every day during the week. And it got even better. So they started doing it three times a day every day during the week and that's wow. my radio and i went to school too now i went to school i um I, I stopped going to nursing school so i went to broadcasting school and i got my license in broadcasting which nobody really needed that but i got it for me because i wanted it for me because i don't want to be working with somebody when they're doing shop talk and my ass looking crazy and i know what they're talking about so i got mm. my license in radio and after i got the license i said well honey you got two strikes against you black and gay so bitch go get your degree so I deferred that loan and we got my bachelor's degree in business management, honey. And here I is today. Wow, Gary. So that's, you know, and other shit along the way, but that's basically, you know, how it wins then, you know? So and that's how I started doing it. So, so I love because you were on a pathway to doing one thing and you went to doing a different thing, which is really, uh, am I correct to say this is your passion? Yep, you know, and I love if radio ended today, honey. I'm going back to nursing, honey, because I love nursing and what have you. I, I love what I do, and I loved it a lot. I mean, my dad was a mortician, and I like, well, I didn't want to do that, so I wound up, you know, going to school for nursing. But I really loved it a lot. But I love radio and TV as well. But honey, it could be something, though, bitch, honey. You on the outside looking in, everything looks glamorous, but boo boo, it's not. So it's not at all, honey. I will say I, that. What but would you say good. to people? Because that's an entry point. It's an interesting point. We always say, I think people who are not celebrities or in the business get tired of us going, it's not what it seems. Because they like, mm-hmm. well, bitch, give me a chance to say it's exactly. not what it seems. Exactly. Exactly. The two of you have a special relationship. Y'all, y'all are, you know, y'all are tight. Y'all are tighter than Spanx. Y'all are tight. Y'all are tight, tight, tight. Thank you. And Kim never would have walked up to another comic and said, I'm going on next and bumped, you know, especially Sherry, someone at your level. She never would have walked up and bumped someone at your level and said, I'm going on next. This was a friendship thing. This was Kim's um, awkward, uh, um, just you know, just the wrong, the wrong way of saying I need to go on. I'm freaking out. I gotta go on. But she knew she could tell you that because you're her friend. So okay. you're looking at it as a comic bumped me. She, but Kim did it as a friend saying, I- "I'm going on next. I gotta go on." Okay. Um, All right. Yeah, that's that's what that because I, I I can't think of. Kim never would have went up to, you know, anyone you, else. 
I can't, yeah, or like, or Lunell or anyone. I can't see Kim going up to a, any other comic going, I'm going, I'm going on next. I'm True. bumping you. True. Right? Okay. This Thank was you, your, Lauren. this was your, this, this was just your friend going, I need to go on. Okay. And, yeah. but you still are right to check her afterwards and go, I get what that was, but don't, you you took me out of my my space, so we it, it, it has it has to be a two way street. And if you if you want to do that, you got to come at me a better way, and also you got to make sure I'm cool with it. Okay, you since you're I. such a headliner, then uh, why does this happen to a headliner? Pull up the picture, Chris. Ha, how about this for your headliner? Oh, what is that? Should I, should, should, <laughs> this is my wig. <laughs> this is my wig line. <laughs> Are my wigs on sale? Yep, 30% off. Sherry, Sherry Shepherd wigs, a whole shop of them. 40% off. Do you looking for your wigs? Put on your wigs. I don't have your wigs. Your wigs is at this little store. My little uh, uh, beauty supply. Where did you yeah. find that? My little Asian beauty supply on oh, French Law. I think that's where they are. It say your whole name, Sherry Shepherd. <laughs> <laughs> And it said, so and under it, it said, headliner, 40% <laughs> <laughs> off. Oh, gosh. This girl pulls up a picture of all of my wigs. I had a wig line. One more time. Let's see this. Beauty supply store. Oh. And all my oh. wigs are on sale 40% oh. off. Can't wait for the wig. I do give you that. I, where did you get that picture? She found a headliner, all right. Oh, oh my boy. Gosh. My friend Chris G's, who's a <laughs> he, said, he said, here you go, get her with this. Everybody, everybody. You didn't tell me. Oh my gosh. Oh, it's wonderful. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, oh. thank you, I wish you would have told me because I wouldn't have went and bought them all. <laughs> <laughs> I would have bought all them damn things. Tally ho. Is that all you'd say is tally ho? You, you asked the band. Uh, Where's our dressing room? I'd say room? something like, I'd say something like, yes. um, it's really nice to be here, Blue. Blue? That's what I'd say. All right, all right, crack on, right, right this way. Okay, both you and Where's Kim. The loo? Let's go Where's the loo? Where's Fish the loo? Fish, Fish and chips. Loo's right over there. Right over there. The loo's right oh, over there. Oh, good, Sherry. You do Chris, good. I, we I, just sound like the three of us like, just hit our heads together and then try to do that. That's not. No, Chris, you sound like that, not me. Oh, no. You sound like that, Christopher. Just, <laughs> just because you make your sentence choppier doesn't make it more English. It does make it. It does make it more angrier because your words are chopped. So it does, Chris. That was very good. That's why you could know Sherry Shepard is a singer. She can pick up anyone's <laughs> voice. Shut up, you are. And do Chris, it in seconds. Around. This, this is the only thing I'm going to leave Chris with. Now that we've all done a London role play, for what reason? I have no idea. Baby hair. <laughs> Baby hair caused this. <laughs> It'll be good dinner conversation when we come out of quarantine and we all dinner, go out to eat Chris. Dinner, dinner conversation. Dinner. Dinner. <laughs> Dinner conversation. Conversation. Uh, I'm gonna. She say thinks this. she's good. You think you're good. I'm at not it. good. <laughs> yeah, I'm just better than Sherry, you, Chris. Sherry, you think she you're does. good at it. Kim doesn't. She's kind of peacocking a little bit right now. I, love, I see. I see her feathers. I don't see think I'm feathers. good. I'm think I'm better than you, Chris. <laughs> okay. Better than you, Chris. Hey, you, Chris. why don't we go over there and take their jobs? Oh, I'm sorry. I digress. <laughs> oh, that's funny. They don't. They don't <laughs> even want us in their country right now. I know, Chris got it. Caroline, you remember that movie? He's just not that into you. Remember? Do I remember the movie? I dated the guy who wrote it. <laughs> <laughs> he was just not that into me. <laughs> oh, shit! <laughs> I, I'm like, please don't let me be the inspiration for this book. <laughs> oh my God. Please don't dedicate it to me at the beginning. Oh no. To Caroline, you inspired me. I, I can't even him. take you. Oh. I, I can't even take I, you. Okay, not only did I date him, but I had a, I had a joke in my mm, act about him. But I feel bad about the joke. I'll have to tell you off camera. Yes, I dated him. And you may have been he, the inspiration. The way, Hilarious. He did not ghost me. We dated in San Francisco. It was very wrong, 
I dated both the headliner and the opener. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> At different times, I was like, this is very awkward. I, I, it I don't really to... is. It was Caroline. Awkward. You know what? It was the 90s, okay? <laughs> Were you featuring at the time? I was a no, middle act, a and believe yeah. me. She's featuring. Okay. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> then, I know. It wasn't the same week, but it was like, or it might have. Caroline. I don't know. I it love was, you anyway. so much. I so love I, I adore I ended you. I dating him, and he lived in San Francisco, and I lived in New York, and he was so sweet and honorable, because we were obviously like, he was such a doll. He was really nice, but. He called me and said, you know, he wanted to date a girl that he had met locally, which would mean he was not dating me. And I, you know what? I didn't, I don't even think I cried about it or anything. I was, I was at my, in Canada for Christmas. And at first he was so sweet. He was like, I want to wish you a Merry Christmas. I'm like, that's so nice. And then I want to dump you on Christmas. <laughs> Um, I need to say a, a couple things to our fans, our listeners and our viewers, because Kim, I made the comment, I was really tired when we did the podcast last week. And um, I said that I was too tired to go pick up the image award and I was gonna send my assistant to pick up the image award. And I got, a lot of people were not happy with me saying that. Um, so it says, let me let me read a couple comments and then we'll, we'll address okay. it. LaVonda Johnson said, Sherry asked the fans to, and we did. Now she has no follow through to get the award. Please, we took time to vote because we enjoy the podcast. Thank you so much. Sherry seems ungrateful and that's disappointing as a fan. Sherry needs to do better. Tiffany F says, Sherry is giving ungrateful. Taurus Goddess 444 said, how you want to win an award, then you don't want to pick it up. I would be ready, dressed, and first in line. Um, Linda White says, send your assistant to pick up an award. Really, Sherry, you want to lose next year? Um, uh, and then let me see. I just I just wanted to get out because I wanted, I had wanted to address, was there anybody else? Um, it says, Katina Cowan said, I love the show, but Sherry wasn't too excited about, excited about getting an NAACP award. I guess you're getting your own talk show, gi giving you a big head. Oh. Oh. Um, Ray T said, said, what's wrong with Sherry tonight? She seems irritated. She's being mean to Chris. Well, that's always. Uh, saying he's not <laughs> deserving of a statue. I think a Chris played a big part in the success of TFM. Um, let me see. So I, uh, one lady said I was embarrassed. So I, I just want to say, first of all, I do want to apologize to our fans and listeners. If it appeared that I was irritated and was being ungrateful, cause I'm really, the truth of the matter is I'm so excited that we won an NAACP image award. It's a hard Jeez. award to get. It really, really is. Um, the one thing I do have to say is if you would give me a little bit of grace, because that, week I have been taping Wendy Williams show and as Kim can testify it is a very hard show to do and not complaining but it's a lot of parts and a lot of mental stuff and by the time we were doing it it was around eight or something my time because we did a live and I was really tired and I was holding the light the hotel light above my head the entire time. Oh. Y'all remember that? So that I could have light. And I was in, hadn't eaten, was a little cranky. And I get cranky with Kim because we've known each other for over 20 years. So we know that our crankiness and shortness with each other doesn't mean the end of our friendship. We, this is, you know, Chris I already know I'm cranky because he get right. it every week. But I, I but find I, it to be charming. I know you do. Because <laughs> you like a boss. <laughs> but I just want to say... <laughs> If y'all could extend a little grace. And so, you know, when I say, when Kim said to me, it wasn't the NAACP Image Awards show. It was just, we were going to the table to pick up the award. And so I was tired and I do, we both have assistants. Chris has an assistant. Well, I don't know. Chris probably does it himself. Cause I don't know, but Dang. we both Dang. have, <laughs> I'll just be over. But I love Chris so much. Um, we both have don't assistants. Love too much. I get first dips, but go ahead. Yeah, but we still don't get no. We don't get no love discount. I do want to let well, you. Know. Are you yeah, you right about that. Oh, you don't be giving us less because oh. we love. Them. Right, right. <laughs> Since I love y'all so much, let me take off a couple thousand. Okay. Oh, but boy. my assistant. Um, I, this, this is what I pay her for. My assistant does a lot of stuff that I cannot do, or I'm too tired to do, 
or when I got to be with Jeffrey. So I do want to say if y'all, if, if people felt that I was being ungrateful or not showing enough, you know, um, what do you call it? Gratefulness or thankfulness, please forgive me. Mm -hmm. Cause I am, I am very excited that we won this award. I was joking because she was joking when she said it. So I just said it too. Why you joking. say Sherry jokingly said? Why? You ran away. Sherry said, Sherry said, don't joke. Yeah, yeah, you took a joke. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know y'all was in y'all's moment. <laughs> Cut to Y'all know you got there, got a little happy, and you ran the light. And you ran the light. You broke a lot of rules and stand up, baby. I still love you. Love both of y'all. But Kim, you were wrong. Wait, God, why are you talking to a videotape? God, God, God answer me. It's he a gonna video. Watch us. That's all right, guy. I'm going to talk to you because you ain't got the full story. You all can go over. Why, God, why are you out in front of somebody else's house and trying to show it <laughs> with the video back and forth? You're like, either one of these houses could be mine. That's okay. what you're, you're looking like a real estate agent. And the two of y'all keep it funny, keep it moving, and y'all beautiful sisters and beautiful friendship like I've never seen so you know, be about your business and go on. All right? You love, so I'm go you back to drinking. Me, I love y'all. You bumped Sherry on a show where you needed a ride home from Sherry. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. We love that, that's, 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 that's like punching your bar, uh, the guy cooking your dinner in the face and go, I'm still hungry. You know? <laughs> I hate, to, I hate to interrupt the show, but there was just a bulletin that came on that a federal judge has blocked the Texas abortion law. Oh! All right. Look, Sherry, right. you can finally get your abortions you need to get. What? <laughs> hey, 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 Kim, I'm going to get one, too. <laughs> I can't even but, with y'all. But I will say, both of you, oh in your God. own way, and I mean in your own way, you're both very unique. George, these are two really good comics. They got natural chops, both of them. But I Sher know, uh, I work with both of them yeah, all the time. But, uh, yeah, great. Kim, Kim needs more confidence and needs to work on her shit. That's basically the difference. <laughs> That's some bullshit. Sherry's full Kim confident is, because is, she works this shit all the time. She's up at the, the chuckle hut every five minutes. Doing <laughs> a few minutes. And, 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 Kim, and, and Kim's on her fucking tennis court writing shit, but not writing it down. <laughs> That's the difference between these two. Hey, how long off of this motherfucker? <laughs> I get out of here. Two funny mamas. Two funny mamas. What's with the grin? Sheffield and Kim. Yeah, that's them. About to throw down again. Tickling the soul from beginning to the end. Two dope friends. I love the way they do their thing. They digress. Don't